friends, we now invite you to join us for the Animation Academy. Please welcome your sketch artist, Matthew DeWater. Wow. Oh, cool. All right. Look at it. There's so many more people here that they the first round. That's a good sign. Hey, cool. Well, welcome, you guys. Thanks for coming. Welcome to the Animation Academy. Uh, welcome to the Festival of the Arts and the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World. Um, we got a lot of cool stuff going on here today. So, um, today for the Animation Academy, we are going to be drawing Bambi. So, if I see a few familiar faces up here um, from the last class. We just got done drawing Thumper. So, we got a two part here today Thumper and Bambi. Um, my name is Matt. And so I will walk you through Bambi today. I'm a character artist for uh, the Disney Creative Group, which is where we do a little bit of everything. Um, some merchandise for the parks, some events like the Run Disney stuff, cruise line stuff. And uh, so one of the cool parts of my job is getting to come here and do this with you guys and do special events like this. So um, I was really excited to get to draw some classic Walt Disney characters, because um, they were some of my favorites, you know, the 30s and 40s and 50s movies um, that we all grew up with. Um, and so I'm going to get my reference down here, jump in and get started. And now I always, whenever I teach a class, I always like to mention um, reference here, and I'll show you guys. This is a, this is called a model sheet. Um, the animators would use it on the film. This is one of the original model sheets. Um, that the animators use for the movie. I've got paper flying around up here. It's windy. It's chilly today. Um, so the animators would use these model sheets to make sure that the characters were nice and consistent uh, throughout the film because there's you know so many different people drawing uh, on a single character. And so they have to look the same all throughout. And so growing up as an artist, there's always kind of a stigma that using references, you know, you're not a real artist if you have to use reference. So that's not true. So we use reference all the time. I don't want any young artists in the audience to think that. And so I encourage you to use whatever reference you can to make your job as an artist easier. Uh, so I'm going to jump in. If, you, uh, if you've ever drawn a Disney character before, uh, you may have seen that a lot of our characters start with a circle for the head. Uh, and so Bambi, now keep in mind, Bambi's got those big old ears, so they're going to go out this way. Um, but Bambi's got a pretty big head, and so we're going to draw a nice big circle in the middle of our page. And now you'll notice that the, the pencils you've got, the pencil I have, uh, doesn't have an eraser. Um, and that's not to say that we're not going to make any mistakes. I make mistakes all the time, but we're just going to draw lightly so that when we do make those mistakes, we can just kind of go back in and, and fix them as we go. So I've got my circle, and we'll get the guidelines in there. So I'll just do a straight line down the middle and extend it down a little ways past because his snout is going to come down past that circle there. Keep it light, like I said. These are just guidelines. This isn't part of the, the final character. And now a lot of times we'll put that other guideline, the, the horizontal guideline, right in the middle. But for Bambi, he's, he's a really cute uh, deer, right, with that big giant forehead. And part of it, uh, part, part of a trick to keep characters looking young and cute is to put their eyes towards the bottom of their head. I have more paper flying around. Where's it coming from? Um, so I'm going to put my horizontal guideline right towards the bottom of his head. I'd say about a little less than a fourth of the way of his head. You're just leaving a little bit of that bottom part of that circle. And that is where his snout is going to come off. So right at that guideline, I'm going to draw a oval. It's kind of an oval, kind of a circle. Somewhere in between. Following that guideline, keeping it on both sides. And that's going to be his little sound. Yeah. 
And before we start setting the features in, I'm just gonna get those ears kind of in place, just so we can have a sense of where we're headed. So I'm gonna start right up here at about one o'clock, if, if this were a clock here. And it's just a curved line out, and then the tip curves up just a little bit. And then it comes all the way back down into this, right, right about the middle the side of his head. Okay, and then we're just gonna mirror that on the other side. So curve line up. And I'm still drawing very light, because this is just really getting the shapes in. And the tip curves up a little bit, and back down to the side of his head. Okay. And this is exactly why I draw light, because as you can see, this ear is pretty noticeably bigger than this ear. So I'm going to come back in here and kind of round that out a little bit. And of course, they don't have to be perfectly symmetrical, especially something like they have these kind of floppy ears. They're always one's pointed up and one's pointed down sometimes. And that can be part of the fun of giving him an expression. Okay, so now we can kind of see the overall shape of Bigby, and we'll go in here and start uh, adding some of the features. So the most important thing on Bambi is going to be his big old cute eyes. Now, even though this is a 2D drawing, we're, we're drawing this on a flat piece of paper, we want to think about this as a rounded form, right? This is a, a 3D deer in space. So his eyes are going to kind of curve along the sides of his head, right? So we always want to kind of keep that in mind. And so the oval that I'm going to draw it's going to go about from the side, the, the center of his, his head here, and it kind of angles in, and it curves right around the edge of that circle to the bottom of that guideline. Okay, so like I said, picture this is his, his eye kind of wrapping right around that curve of his head. And we'll mirror it on the other side. You'll see me kind of take a second and set back and make sure that I've got it going in the right place here. Right now it looks a little bit. Area 51 ish, kind of an alien happening. But we'll start to see him real soon. Okay. And I'll get the pupils in there. Now, same thing, another, another kind of rule of thumb for a cute young character is that their pupils are real big compared to the size of their eye and the size of their head. So it takes up about half the space, and it's just a circle. That's about half of that oval. Just like that. And we'll do the same on the other side. And now I'm, I'm still drawing fairly light. Um, but now that we can get a little bit more confident in the fact that we've got his features kind of in the right place, we can start to come in here and solidify some of these actual features. So right now I'm going to come in here on his top eyelid and give him some lashes. First I'm just going to make that top eyelid nice and thick. And just using that same line that I already had, I just kind of come in here and thicken it up. And give Bambi some nice big, bold eyelashes. Now, Bambi, of course, a lot of people confuse, I, I've had people confuse 
Bambi for a girl. He is not, he's a boy, but um, we draw those big little eyelashes on him. Just to add to that cute factor. And I'll do the same thing over here. It's just kind of a rule of thumb. We like to use uneven numbers for a lot of things like that, or if you're doing wrinkles in, in the clothes or anything like that. A lot of uh, rule of thumb is to go with an uneven number so it doesn't look too um, doesn't feel too manufactured. Gives it a bit of life. And I'll come up here one more time on the upper eyelid, and I'll do the crease that goes above his eyelid. Okay, and it's just another curved line that follows that same curve. And it just sets that eyeball back into the head. Let's get his snout taken care of before we add the mask in. So I'll come down here to where his nose is going to be. His nose is right at the, the intersection of that oval. Okay, and it's kind of like a... you got a curved top shape, and it's almost like a little jelly bean shape. It comes down here. It's very subtle. Okay, it's not got a bunch of curves happening, but it's just kind of a soft, upside down, jelly bean shape. Almost like a really rounded rectangle with a little dent in the bottom, right there. Okay. Now his smile lines are going to come right off of that nose. So from the top of the nose, you're just going to follow the oval down that we started with and kind of bring the smile line out like this. And that goes on both sides. Edge of the nose, down that oval, and it curves around and you make the smile line for him. And his smile is gonna come right off of that. And it starts to come a little bit further past the the circle of the head. And it's basically a W. Okay, if you were here for the Thumper class, a lot of this is going to look familiar. A lot of cute animals have many similar characteristics there. Okay, now this is where we're going to veer just a little bit from that oval that we had. Remember that this is just a guideline. So I'm going to come down from about where that smile line went and curve down following that oval and make his bottom lip. And it comes right back up into the head. And that's his bottom lip. finish the bottom lip with the bottom of his mouth, and it just follows that same curve that we just did, just inside, right up to the corners of his smile again. his tongue in there, which is just two little bumps. A little bean inside his mouth. And now, 
This is very subtle, and with so much happening with a smile, it's hard to see. But I'm going to darken up that oval just a little bit around the outside of his mouth, because that's part of his mask, is uh, the, the white part of his snout. This part of his cheek would be brown, if we were to color this in. And then the front of his snout would be white. And that's kind of that separation line. Okay. Now I'm going to give him his cheeks. His cheeks are going to come out a little bit further from that circle of the head. Okay. It follows more or less the same curve. But they come down and go right into the side of that snout that we just drew. So right about from where the eye is to the side of the snout. Let's get his mask in here. So, just like Mickey, Bambi has those color separations around his eyes. And they come right up from the side of his head. And it's basically following that same curve of the eye all the way back down into the corner of his eye again. So that's the lighter part of his head. Same thing over here. Draw his mask. Okay, and we're going to do his brow line just above that. Now the brow line breaks the circle a little bit. It comes outside the circle and goes back down into the side of his head. So it's again following that same curve of the oval. But this time we're breaking out of that circle just a little bit. And same on the other side for the brow. Okay. And now the final part is his hair. The final part of his face, I should say, because we'll go back in and do the ears some more. But the hair on his head, you're going to start at the top of the mask, curve down to the middle of the face, right at that guideline, and then curve back up to the top of the mask. So it's basically just a, a U. It's almost like a little tightrope that goes between his two eyes. Okay, so that's the kind of the bottom of his hair. And for the top of his hair, I'll come right up here to where we have our, our uh, ears coming out. Basically, we'll fill in this part right between the ears. And this isn't really important how many little tufts of hair you do. Just come in here and it's kind of parted, you know, to one side like this. And just add some little curves for tufts of hair. Personality. I'm going to come in here and add a little wrinkle on his nose. Just to kind of set that uh, snout back in his face. And I'm also going to come in here and add the corners of his eyes. So he's got those, you know, just like we have corners of his eyes. It's just comes down right kind of to the guideline. Doesn't have to be too harsh or anything. Okay. 
Okay? And it will give shape to his ears. So first, I'm just going to darken up that top line there. Okay, because that's one of our... We know that line's in the right place. But rather than just follow this out and around, I'm going to bring this one down this time. And watch what I do here. It's basically like an S curve. It comes right down the middle of the ear and back into the side of his head. Okay, and it goes so from the corner, it's an S curve, back down to the side of his head. And then you can finish off that first shape that we drew. And that's the inside of his ear there. Okay, so I'll do the same over here. And this time it'll be a backwards S shape, right from the tip. And a backwards S down to the side of his head. And I'll finish that line off that we had originally. two years. If I haven't already, I'll come in here and just kind of darken up the, the top of his head there. The, it was the, the first circle that we drew. It's the only really, it's the only bit of a circle that makes it to the end of the drawing. Okay, and he's got some details on his ears that, you know, all, all kinds of deer have their own unique little um, stripes and spots and everything. But Bambi's, he's got two black little tips on his ears. So I'll just shade those in black. And then it's a stripe, it's a white stripe that follows that S curve right there. So it's basically the same as that curve, just on the inside. about there, but I don't know about you guys, he's still looking a little bit freaky because of those big empty pupils, right? So what's going to make Bambi look super cute is we're going to shade in his pupils, but before we just go crazy and shade those all in, I'm going to draw a couple highlights. So right up here, I'm going to draw basically a little box highlight. Right up there, Right up there. They should go the same direction in both eyes because picture that the light is coming at him from the same direction. Both eyes. And I'll even do another little one on the opposite side. I don't like that. This one I'm doing is a triangle. Now, Highlights are, are kind of, you know, it really just depends what light is, is hitting the eye. So you can kind of just do whatever shapes you want. The trick is to have them um, the same in both eyes. Now that we've got those shapes, we're going to leave those white and shade in the rest of the eye. And as you can see, just like that, it looks much cuter, much more like Bambi. So I'm going to come in here and just darken up everything that I've got going on by the eyes here. Because really the focus is so much on those eyes for Bambi. But that's the part I want to nail. That's the part I want to get right. There's a, we talk a lot in animation about that the eyes are the window to the soul. So if you're going to get anything right, you want it to be the eyes. 
And I think I'll come in here and shade in the mouth and the nose. And I'll leave, the, I'll, I'll leave a little bit of highlight for the nose. So I'll just, I'm just going to shade in the bottom part of the nose. Just like that. And leave a little bit of white space there. And I'll even come in on the top, just kind of with the side of my pencil, and lightly shade in the dark brown of his hair. shoulders in. One kind of curves that way for his belly and one curves this way for his back. And a few tufts of hair right at his chest here. And with that, we've got baby. So how are we feeling so far? Bambi is not an easy character to draw, and uh, that is, uh, you'll, you'll hear those stories from the animators that worked on the movie. Um, we talked in the last class of Thumper that the artists brought in actual real-life animals into the studio so that they could study them, because deer are so hard to, to get right. Um, but that is part of the fun of drawing, is to practice, practice, and get it wrong, and try again, and keep trying until you finally get it right and you feel good about it. Um, a little fun fact about Bambi, you know in the movie, um, the, the uh, kind of dark, you know, it's, it's, it's a fairly dark movie with the mom and all that, you know that, um, and there's that line where the mom tells Bambi, Man is in the forest, and um, you know, very serious moment in the movie where Bambi learns that there's dangers out there that he needs to be aware of. But in the studio, when they were working on Bambi, the uh, this is kind of a one of those anecdotes where it's like you don't know how much of this was real or how much has been fabricated over the years. But apparently, the animators who worked on Bambi. Um, would warn each other, they would say, man is in the forest. And that would mean that Walt Disney was coming down the hallway and they needed to get back to work <laughs> before he caught them giving off. Okay, so we've got Bambi. I would love for you guys to uh, hold up your drawings so I can see them and I'm gonna take a selfie. So I can see what we got. And let me get up here so I can get as many in as I can. Okay, and on three, say Bambi. One, two, three. Bambi! All right, cool. Okay, well, thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you had fun. Um, I hope we will keep drawing, and I, I would love for you guys to share your drawings um, on social media. You can tag at Disney Parks. Um, that would be really cool to see. And uh, we will be here every day for Festival of the Arts. We'd love to have you again. So thank you so much for joining us, and uh, the exits are going to be on either side. See you guys soon. Friends, thank you for joining us for this presentation of the Animation Academy. We hope you enjoy the rest of your day here at the Epcot International Festival of the Arts.